Welcome, 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 and we are going to be looking at sources of light today. So our very first lesson, it's so exciting to have you here. You're the light of my life, children. Well, no, you're not actually. Lights are the light of my life, and that's what we're going to learn about them, sources of light. So what are they? The, the curriculum objective is here. What are we trying to do? We want to learn, we want to describe and explain various types of light emissions, e.g. chemiluminescence, bioluminescence, incandescence, fluorescence, phosphorescence, triboluminescence. Yeah, I just like doing my robot voice. With, From an electric discharge or light emitting diode, LED. Okay, that is the things we're going to learn about. Let's go look at the first one without further ado. Chemiluminescence. Chemiluminescence. So luminescence is a word that means light. Where do you think that light comes from? That's right, chemicals. Chemiluminescence is light resulting from a chemical reaction. Examples, glow sticks, like at a rave, and luminol, like at a crime scene that you might investigate after said rave. Okay, uh, hopefully not. Uh, but luminol is that stuff that... Um, it luminesces, it glows when a certain chemical reaction happens. So it's often used at a crime scene to find blood uh, because it will change color in the presence of the iron in the blood. So there you go. And now you know. Bioluminescence. Bioluminescence is chemiluminescence coming from a living thing. So bioluminescence is light resulting from a biochemical reaction by a living organism. So the difference is it comes from a living thing, such as fireflies, fireflies floating in the distance. That is a very poorly poor rendition of a song by, shoot, what are their names? Uh, Tragically Hip. Fireflies. It's a good song. And yeah, I like the Tragically Hip. You should give them, give them a look. Uh, great Canadian band. R.I.P. That's for the lead singer. And uh, Foxfire. Foxfire is a glow, glowing fungus. I mean, how weird is that? A glowing fungus. Although even freakier is luciferase. It's a glowing enzyme. What is an enzyme? An enzyme is a small chemical that allows protein that allows other chemical reactions to happen faster. And luciferase is... They're in our body, and if we didn't have enzymes all throughout our body, we just wouldn't be able to perform the chemical reactions we need to live. Luciferase is a special enzyme because it actually glows when it does its job, and I think that's kind of cool. Why is it called luciferase? Because lucifer means bearer of light. And I know that you might think, doesn't that word mean the devil? Well, yeah, one of the things that Lucifer, the angel, did that made God so mad was gave light to humans. An interesting story paralleled in the myth of Prometheus. Uh, but in any case, a Lucifer, light bearer, bringer of light, Luciferase. Whenever you see the word A-S-E at the end of a word, you know it's an enzyme. Luciferase is an enzyme that glows in the dark. It brings light. Bring the light! Bring the fire! None of these things bring fire because they don't bring heat, but bam! Incandescence does. So what's the difference between incandescence and luminescence? Incandescence is the emission of electromagnetic radiation, including visible light, from a hot body as a result of its temperature. Now, I know I could make an inappropriate hot body joke, but that's not what I mean. I don't mean hot attractive. I mean if the light is coming off a body because it is temperature hot then we say that's incandescent. Although you could say to somebody, I guess if you want to be real clever, you could be saying, yo, you're so hot, you're incandescent. Um, and if they're impressed with people who use um, scientific terms correctly, then you will impress them. What are some examples? An incandescent light bulb. That's the kind of light bulbs, the round ones, with a filament that glows and gives off heat. They're also used in your easy bake oven or good old fashioned torch, fire bad. Um, so yeah, a torch would definitely be an example of incandescent light, light generating heat, although you could make the argument that it's chemiluminescence because it's a chemical. So you can go both ways on that. But no, no, my bad. Torch, definitely incandescence, much more than chemiluminescence. And when I say torch, I don't mean a British torch. And in England, they call a flashlight a torch. 
that's for a special student. You know who you are. Um, but I mean a quartz, like a thing on fire. So, all right, fluorescence. Fluorescence is the emission of light by a substance that has absorbed light or, a, or other electromagnetic radiation. So when you have fluorescent, it's like things, it seems to glow on a different level. So you can have a fluorescent light bulb. And the thing with a fluorescent light bulb, you'll notice that the, the thing generating the, the light is not heat. It's fluorescence. So there's a substance that's absorbing light and then re-emitting it right after on a different wavelength. So um, fluorescent light bulb signage, so signs that you shine a light on and then it sort of shines back ex extra bright. Optical brighteners, exclamation mark. These are actually things that we put in our detergent, uh, even our toothpaste, and they literally make our whites whiter because they cause the substance to absorb extra radiation and emit it. So it's basically glowing with more light than it's actually reflecting. And the last is spectroscopy. Um, I could probably spend about 20 minutes talking about what spectroscopy is. I think I'll just leave it at, that's a really cool technique we can use to figure out what's in things. We're definitely coming back to spectroscopy in this unit. But it can be used to make a spectroscope. And phosphorescence. Unlike fluorescence, in phosphorescence, the electron retains stability, emitting light that continues to glow in the dark even after the stimulating light source has been removed. A little bit jargony there. I'll tell you what that means in a nutshell. Basically, the difference between fluorescence and phosphorescence, with fluorescence, things stop shining the second you take the light off off of them. With phosphorescence, the thing absorbs the light energy and emits that light energy even after the light source is gone. Now, the first example is a very specific example. When I was a kid, I had a glow-in-the-dark basketball. It was awesome. It was it, it glowed in the dark, and it was a basketball. I guess that's pretty obvious in just the name. And um, it's that's not really a thing other than in my life. But whenever I think of phosphorescence, I always think of my glow-in-the-dark basketball or my glow-in-the-dark skull. Both of things were just my prized possessions as a kid. In general, glow-in-the-dark stickers and tape. Let's be honest, as kids, we all love stickers. Come on, man. When they glowed in the dark, did that not kick it up like a billion notches? Like, oh, wow. I love me some glow-in-the-dark stickers and glow-in-the-dark tape. Let's move on to triboluminescence. Tribo, triboluminescence. Now you probably think, oh, wait a minute. Does that mean it's the glowing of a tribe? No, in this case, tribo means from friction. So triboluminescence, light generated when bonds of material are broken, when that material is scratched, crushed, or rubbed. Now here's the thing that's freaky. Try this experiment at home. When you peel scotch tape and you pull it back, there will be a slight amount of triboluminescence developed right along the crack where you peel back the tape. So as you're pulling the tape at the edge where the tape is peeling away, it will generate a little bit of light. You probably have to be in a very dark room or maybe even pitch dark to see it. Winto green lifesavers are another thing. They're a kind of lifesavers that they're, they're white ones, and when you bite into them, they also glow in the dark. So if you actually have one in your mouth and you kind of like chomp on it, because your mouth is already dark, you, you can sort of see it if you kind of have your mouth, mouth open a little bit while you're chomping on it. And I know it is rude to eat with your mouth open, but this would be a science experiment, so I think it's legit. All right, speaking of legit electrical discharge, pew, 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 is me imitating electrical discharge. Um, electrical discharge. Electrostatic discharge, also known as ESD, by nobody really, but okay, whatever. Electrical statical discharge is the sudden flow of electricity between two electrically electrically charged objects. Okay, so an example we've been learning about, we learned about static electricity, so it could be something as little as sparks jumping off of your finger uh, from static discharge right up to lightning or lasers from my finger pew 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 no not probably lasers from my finger that would actually be a kind of light it would be called a laser and that's a totally different light not even talked about in this particular unit but we come up with the last four source of light we're going to be talking about is an led light emitting a diode it's a semiconductor that means something that allows electricity to travel under certain circumstances but not under other circumstances that is a it's a it's a semiconductor light source that emits light when current flows through it. And 
Your phones and TV screens are LED. In fact, you are zombies of the LED apocalypse, you could say. And, um, or like the social media apocalypse or something. But no, you're great. You're great. Why, why am I putting you down? You know, if you, if you took the time to watch this video and if you got this far, you're awesome. So kudos to you. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Phone and TV screens are examples of light emitting diodes as are LED lights. And I just want to put that one in there because, you know, yeah, that's a really crappy answer that I would not accept on a test. Like, give me an example of an LED light. And you couldn't say just LED light. Uh, but what I was meaning is, you know, those little ones, it's just little tiny round ones, tiny round ones. Um, those are LEDs. They actually are way better on electricity. And you know what's also way better on electricity? Me probably stopping. And I'm pushing the button to say next. There is no next. And that means we are done. So... Peace out. See you on lesson two. Pew, pew. That will not become my thing. I promise.